I'm Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel, Glass in Hand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Get out. Uh, start again. Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel, Speed Fight 3 time. You meet me halfway through this because I've done the basics before. Get the seat bucket out. Remember that on the Speed Fight 3, it's got a little cigarette attachment or power adapter now. And you just unplug that to get the seat out. Um, battery, stick it on charge, done that. Now, the problems with this was minimal, to be honest with you. No MOT. It was missing the right-hand side indicator and the plastic panel. Very hard to get hold of parts for this. I managed to get a pair of white ones, a um, bit battered up. So they're coming today. I'm going to polish them up, um, respray them, job done. Uh, obviously, undercoat and everything else. But they're white, so they're going to match the front here. That took a long time finding a pair of them. But I'm getting the basic bits off. Now, I haven't taken one of these apart for a very long time. Um, the front end come off with four um, screws, disconnect the light socket, plug, and it just comes off nicely. But you can see here, there's a bit of work being done with some cable, I don't know, metal, copper. I'm going to bond all this under here with heat glue, make sure it's solid. But it is missing the two little top bits, if you can see. So that's a bit odd, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to manage without them to it. I reckon someone snapped one and thought I'll make it the same on the other side and snap that one rather than thinking let's not do that. Don't do it! Snap one, bond it back on. Don't just snap them. These are so bloody hard to get parts for. Really hard. Not like the old SB2s or so on. Anyway, I'm going to glue all this up and get it sorted. At the front end, as I said, I haven't taken mine apart for a very long time and I found a couple of bolts. These are star shape. Okay? Not the ordinary cross Phillips or flathead screwdriver and a couple of 10mm bolts on here. So luckily the other side's already off uh, I can see what I'm doing. And even for me, you know, it's a bit of a, is that ready to come off now? Is that not ready to come off? So, so far it's just a couple of, you know, there's the 10mm, a couple of star shapes. Um, look like it's ready to come off and yet it isn't. There's something still screwed in somewhere. I'm going to have to have a little look. But don't just try and yank off. The problem with manufacturers, they make some that clip on and then screw tight, like the Boetian, um, even my big Triumph, the same sort of thing, and other ones just bolt and then fall off once you take two bolts or three bolts or four bolts off. So we've got to figure out what this is. Tyres are a good tread on here. It does start, which is lovely to see. Revs up, new plug. I'm debating whether to check the carburetor out and clean it. And I'm also debating to take the variator cover off and look at the rollers. But what I'm going to do is fit it all up, test ride it. Ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, would I like to see? Well, I'll know, you know, from years' experience. I'll know when I jump on this. It's got a nice sports exhaust on this one. I have a quick look around it now. Obviously, the front end is off. However, the panels, that's one coming off. The rear panels don't look too bad. Looks like someone's brought some little blue uh, bolts for the actual engine cover. So that means to me that someone's actually taking a bit of care of it, probably looked under there, who knows. Anyway, air filter, I'm going to check that out. Still the basics, you've still got your old um, plug at the front, but you've got a CDI and all the other bits at the back, and the two fuses. Now, a lot of people ask about these clocks, some recently actually, and they say things like, my indicators don't work, or this has gone dead, and this is a whole unit. The whole unit, basically. If it goes wrong, you've got to replace it. That's annoying, but that's what they did. The indicator and relays in there, everything's in there. So it's not good if they die. That is pretty much new. And look at that for a lovely tread on the tyre. And this has got a jack-up kit. That's nice. The tyre's good. Brakes are good. Let's see, yeah, someone's... Yeah, we're going to look at that. I don't mind wood screws if they're actually connecting to something rather than just poking through. But I've got to work out what we can do with connecting the top bit without these two here. Can't have it loose or just held in with two bolts. So we might have to work out something to screw through somewhere else to drill into it. I don't know yet. We're going to have to have a little look into this. But first impressions, it looks a bit of a mess. <laughs> but it's a part, isn't it, you know? So it'd be nice when you come back and see that... Uh, I've put the white panels on after spraying them and hopefully it'll all look quite good. The indicators again are separate. You buy these separate. Yeah, don't come as a whole one. Yeah. So it's cost me up like 60 odd quid, which to be honest with you, 
is still good for these parts. Unlike Speed Fight 4, which I can't get anything for. Excuse the pun. Um, fork seals are good. Brake pads are good. I can't see why this wouldn't pass an MOT, but I'm going to go right over it. Um, I've done many MOT videos. Check out my channel for preparing your bike for an MOT. And even a seasoned person like me, your bike can still fail the MOT. Uh, I had a little Piaggio zip, I think it was. Took that in for the MOT and it fouled on the brake disc. Had a slight wobble to it. And I only noticed it when I was hammering up there and I pulled the brake and it, it feels like you're doing this all the time when you're braking. Warp disc, fouled the MOT. Silly things, you know, it's not just tyre depth, the tread. It can be how the tyre condition is. The valve stem, you know, little things like that can foul on. Okay, that's just rubbish. You know, I say to you guys, don't pull cables off, don't try and rip off panels and so on. But this was a mess. So you've got this bolt here, so you get the front off. You've got two underneath here that are star shape. And it sort of does this wiggle bit, you can't get it off, no way. So then while I'm here, I can see the indicator, I can see another bolt, so I've got to pull it out slightly, get this in here and undo it, and then go to the top bit and undo that. Eventually, that then drops down, to then reveal another bloody screw here that connects it to there. So you know that you would have pulled that and snapped it, guarantee it, and then wonder why it's all loose. So, you know, that's, that's mental. To have that there covering the screw that you can't really see, you know? And then you look down now and I can see it, but that was in the way to be able to pull it a tiny bit more so you could see it, otherwise it's blocked in. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a bit shit. I mean, all right, next time I'll do it, I'll know, and I probably did it before, I remember then, but it's been, I don't know, three years, whatever it's been. So, yeah, that's a bit of a bugger. That's a good one. So I'll just clean that up, keep that. Keep all the nuts and bolts I've got. But, yeah, I know I'm only at you guys, but there's a lovely blue panel there. That could be cleaned up and used. I mean, it's got some scratches, what hasn't nowadays. Um, yeah, there we go. So now I can wait... For the two panels to come later, me up with me then, which will be like now for you. <laughs> I've got to wait. But I just wanted to see, get it off, get it ready, work out what I can do, glue them panels up, use these little clips if I can. You can get a little pack off eBay. Top tip of the day. Ah, God, no, I'm never Simon. Anyway, there we go, radio one. Right, get them, okay? You can buy them. I think Halfords do them, or eBay. Um, this blue spot, this is U-clip and screw assortment. They've got all different sizes, some you're never going to use. Well worth getting, if not for the actual bolts, but for the actual clips, and you can put your own nuts and bolts and screws in them. Well worth having. And I'll put all these in there, and they go on properly, you know? I'm trying to get a little nut or cut into it, drill into it, and yet, so I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with the fronts this year. I might end up actually being able to screw into the light section just gently. Um, it's more secure, do you know? Cut the bolts here and there, it doesn't hurt sometimes if it secures it. Right, let's get on with this. You'll laugh, but what actually impressed me when I picked this bike up had the mirrors. <laughs> I was like, yes, mirrors! So many of these little pegs, the kids take the mirrors off, I think they whack them or don't think they look cool. But they're there to save their life, you know? Over the shoulder, I know, but they're still saving life for somebody that come racing up behind you. Anyway, I'm going to actually fix these onto the um, moped now. It just makes them look, I think, anyway, so much better just having a little pair of mirrors there. Yeah, look at that. Much, much So instead of that being like there, basically. So instead of this doing this, it'll be just slightly out which means it will be much better. It will push that micro switch in more, which sits there basically, and it will turn it on and off. Pass the MOT, safety, job done. And there we have it, nice now, on, off, on, off, perfectly. I also ground a tiny little bit of the actual um, lever down as well, so that pushes really well, works perfectly. Here's something for you. Dog owners, do you think dogs are just reincarnated pensioners? Because my dog whines unless I open the garage door about the six inches there and then sits there 
just staring out all day. She'd sit there all day and see something, then she comes running along and looks up and down the fence and then straight back in here again to the next thing she sees. They are, aren't they? Comments below. Panels came. Indicator looks a bit dirty, more secondhand than I wanted, but here are the panels. There's the first panel. Fuck off. Little shit. What a wanker. Noisy truck. Yeah. Stupid little one point fucking six VXR. <laughs> so, the panels came. First panel. And the second panel. And the indicator was a little bit more messy than I wanted. So, after peeling all the stickers off, um, quite good quality stickers, so they actually came off. Um, Petrolling all the glue off, rubbing a little bit down on the in the bad bits, blowing over with primer, um, a couple of coats more on the rough bits, and then a white coat, what does it look like now? To be honest with you, I have to say quite good. It's not bad, is it, eh? Nice bit of shine to them as well. Haven't lacquered them. Um, just a nice couple of four coats on there of just the white. Very happy with them. They are gonna go on. They are just still a little bit soft, um, which means that when I put my fingers and push on them, you see my fingerprint. If I blew them over a bit of lacquer now, that'd probably really harden well, but they will harden anyway. Um, I just I don't know. Let's see if we've got any lacquer. No, I have not. But that will harden. Leave that overnight. Um, connect the indicators back the way they were. Push all the front on again. And it'll be job done. I did test the indicators, which you can see. You fucking can't see nothing, can you? I did test the indicators. And they worked. Oh, look at that. <laughs> but I had to WD them, maintenance spray, um, push the wires around a little bit. I think they've been off some time actually. But this ped starts. Oh, you haven't heard it yet, have you? Let's get all the uh, crap off of it. Stay there. So, nice little dash. Hold the brake. And even cleaned up the actual variator a bit. It's not a bad little bike, I've got to be honest with you. And it looks so much nicer um, with the white top and the white sides. I don't think you'll notice any difference, to be honest with you. Hello. Yes. <laughs> she was asleep, so I snuck out. And all she's woke up and gone, where are you? And then come up here. Yes, hello. So they'd have come up here and, and bother me up here. Anyway, I'm gonna let them panels dry tonight. Nice, put them on tomorrow, and you'll get to see what it looks like. Do I put any stickers on them? I haven't got any Speed Fight 3 stickers. I have got like Molossy little ones. I don't know. Uh, a little bit too plasticky and crappy. NGK. I might put them on the top tiny bit because that's what plug I put in there. So good old NGK. I think I'll give them a miss. And uh, yeah. We'll have a good look round it tomorrow. I'll give you some specs, i.e. fuel tank, tyre sizes and all that sort of stuff. I ain't done that for a long while. Um, quite nice work on this little Speed Fight 3, I suppose, because it actually ran in the first place. Um, I've still got to tap and die the Speed Fight 4. I'm not looking forward to that, to be honest with you. And the Harrier, the rollers are coming tomorrow, and that'll be up and running. Job done. And this is what she does <laughs> every time. Just plops herself down wherever you are loves a good head scratch don't you yes i do
kill. So just before I start to um, put these all back together, started in 2010 the Speed Fight 3, not that popular. Don't hold the money as much as the Speed Fight 1s and 2s did. Speed Fight 4 obviously still new and holding the money. Um, but these had a, a world of pain with the clocks. The indicators, as I said before, were all inside the dash, which always goes. Um, CDI unit went on them. Um, but with their faults, they, they, looked, they weren't made in the same country, and obviously they looked a bit Chinese-ish, so just not as popular, and more restricted as well. However, 13-inch wheels, a two-gallon just over tank, um, capable of doing 30, 40 odd miles an hour, Water cooled ones were faster as long as they restricted them, which is the old fashioned way. But a lot of these were CDI restricted. Nice seating position, under seat bucket again, um, two T's. They stopped with a 100cc two T and made a 125. Video on my channel of these. I didn't work on them much, I didn't like them, caused a lot of problems, and end up a lot of them were junk. Um, this one, however, not bad at all. Um, not mega miles on it, I think it's got 15 kilometers, 1000 kilometers on this, which is good. Nice shiny new panels in a minute. And we're going to get it all back together and then go for a ride on this one and see what it goes like. MOT next week and then it'll be up for sale. Job done. Contrary to belief, I do actually like to check everything on the bike before I sell them. And I just don't know, it's just something that I do all the time. And, and with this one, someone's very nicely bothered to put very nice bolts in there. So that makes my life a lot, lot easier. Um, all the same size, lucky enough. Except the back one. Remember that goes at the back here. And that goes in the airbox. I remember that one. Oh, I just uh, want to check. Now, I rode up the road and down the road again. First time uphill slightly she hit around about 17 19 miles an hour and then came back down at 30 odd there's a big one there and then i went back up again and it hit 29 miles an hour up there and then well over 30 odd on the way back 37 38 and kept going but i ran out of road but i did hear ever so slightly and there's a little cob in here that's what keeps it on i did hear a little like rattle noise that I think you heard here when I started up before and I'm not happy with that so I think it's the dog for the kickstart but we'll see so it's just a little keep wiggling keep wiggling keep wiggling and eventually come off so oh, I'm wrong because that's pretty stuck in there that I thought it was that because they often rattle when the variator rolls round, this can just rattle. That's solid. So that's good. So I'll spray it up and clean it up. So, what's making little tinny tin rattle noises then? I don't know. But, always worth taking off. What size is that then? 15. I need a 14. Even if the rollers are good, we still will give it a good clean. There we go. Nut out. It makes such an easy job of this, doesn't it? That's the outer variator cover. Give that a little polish and clean. Looks all good. Remember the clutch. Looks good as well. Nice and warm for my little ride. And there we go. Let's have a look. Clean that up. Just a clean rag. Can't say it more times than that, can I? Everything looks quite good in there, to be honest with you. And then let's have a look here. <laughs> Some might have watched my early videos, they've combied them. But they don't look brilliant. They look slightly worn in there. So, you see, glove. So we're gonna give them a wipe. They are, however, Nice and round, but just cleaning these up, giving it a wipe out, will increase the speed, pull away, top end, everything. I just can't stress how much cleaning and changing of rollers helps your bike. Remember the SR that I recently did? Just cleaned them up. 
No, I didn't. Remember the SR? Bought new ones. Good as gold. The young lad came round. He was ecstatic with that. I was really quite happy with that. And even the... Uh, God, that Sinus Harry I just did. They were... I've never seen nothing like it. So, clean. That stops them rolling. That means they'll go square. Wow, look at that. Okay, that is really, really not good. So I am happy that I've taken it apart. It still doesn't make sense what the rattle is. So on the Speed Fight 1 and 2s, you cannot start the bike properly with the cover off because the Bendix flies out. But on the Speed Fight 3 and 4, they did this back starter, so it's further down, and you've got this other little belt here. So that means we can start it, and it means we can see what's going on without the cover on. That's my next little bit I'm going to do. So let me clean this, let me pop it all back on again, everywhere, nice clean dry rag. There's no marks on this, we're going to clean the tube as well, so it runs up and down nicely. This will increase the speed. Happy days. I'll come back to you when I find out what the rattle is. So there we have the variator all back on. Who's running eight and three odds. So obviously they've wore down a little bit. So it's coming to just under 34. I like a total weight of 36. So 34-ish, not too bad at all. So we're gonna start it and see what happens. Remember to put a block of wood under the stand. This makes sure the back wheel can flow freely. Give it a start. So it seems there's just a little bit of chatter from the back electric start, the little clog. So it seems there's a little bit of chatter from the rear, um, behind the variator, the starter cog that goes on there. A little bit of chatter from that. It's not dangerous, not going to cause any problems, starts fine, runs fine. Happy days, going to put it all back together again now and I am convinced you get a lot more speed. Meanwhile, I'm going to continue to clean up. Every little bit of dust from the previous belt, it just helps give it a little wipe. Yes, you're going to go through a few of these, but nice and clean, happy days, job done. So there we have, no head. So there we have another completed little project. Didn't need an awful lot this one, if I'm honest with you, just the front end. Have a quick look around it and tell me what you think. Um, but now it starts, it stops, it rides really well. Um, just been back up and down the road, what an improvement. Five mile an hour, so it's topped quickly 30 mile and up there. And I was doing nearly 40 downhill before I had to stop again. So I reckon somewhere downhill 45, be happy 40 mile an hour all round, which is great for a little 50cc. Happy days. And last one. You do have to wait for the system to go round on these ones, to so clock up and down, lights go, then you can put it back in and start the light. Did any of you hear that tone change? Eh? You know, you don't get it on the 40, so just go there and stay there. It's starting to smell a bit now. Anyway, quick look around. What do you think of the front panels? Yeah, I'll put a little NRG stickers on them. Front's all really nicely secure now. I'll put extra screws behind there. I trimmed that a little bit down there because it was rubbing. You can't have things rubbing. Headstock's fine. Suspension's fine. Tire's good. Brakes are good. Discs are nice and flat. Um, a little bit, still a bit stiff, but that will tone down the more you ride it. Airbox was good. Plug was good. Rear tire very good as well. Dash, as I said, it's quite nice on these. Turn on. 
goes that way, does that, and then you can start it, which is really, really nice. Mirrors both on there. Simple, aren't they? Left, right, cancel, high beam, flash, horn, start, nothing on that side. Petrol goes in here under the seat. Now these, you just turn. Push into lock or just turn the key. Okay? Under the seat, 2T, that was missing. Had one of them lucky enough. 2T goes in there, battery there, two fuses there. Bucket does come out with these four here and just lifts straight out. Happy days. Locks again. Rear lights, nice and easy. LED, normal brake light. There's the wedge. And there's a nice little jack up kit. Nice shock. Kickstart works. Center stands not bent round, which is always nice. One speed fight free. I've got to say, what do you reckon? They were obviously blue. That colour. What do you reckon? White with white? Should I have gone black? I don't think that looks odd. It's 10 years old. Going to have a few marks on it. Very nice, Techni gas exhaust. And that's pretty new to be honest with you. So what else would I do? Yeah, okay. New set of rollers, six grams, 36 in total. That's all I'd do to this. Um, I like a jack up kit, brings it just a little bit more higher. Bolts look quite nice. Brand new, roughly, well, nylon new Techni gas exhaust on there. Bad points, little chip bits at the front. Panels aren't original, but well, the original speed fight, but not original to this. So it's got pros and cons. I don't know if anybody's going to notice them panels not being the original um, colours, good tyres, brakes, years MOT. What more could you want? Nice little bike. And I've stopped and started this an awful lot now. A little bit of polishing and cleaning, job done. Right, thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. What's next? And you never know, I may have another guest appearance from somebody with hair. Who knows? Take care. I did offer, I did offer you guys to come here, showcase your bike, and I got none. Zero. Couple people say I live too far. Nothing. Not loved. Bye-bye.